Hi all, welcome to a new lecture in the quantum computing course. We have already seen many algorithms. The last algorithm we saw was Dreyschutzer. And we saw that this was an, a problem which we could solve in only one query on a quantum computer, but it requires lot more queries on a classical computer. Let me remind you what the problem was. We were given a function or an oracle for a function. The promise was either this function is constant that means its value is the same on all inputs or otherwise the number of inputs for which fx is equal to 1, this number is same as number of inputs such that fx is equal to 0. This was the balanced case. It was told to us that we are going to have one of these two cases and our task was to find out which case f is in. This was given a black box for the function. We saw a kind of impressive advantage using the Deutsch Jones algorithm. But you might have a query, or someone might say that this advantage actually doesn't seem very impressive. The reason being, they might argue, why not query some of the inputs randomly? If I do that, even with constant such queries, I can distinguish between these cases in high probability. What do I mean? Even with constant such queries, if f is balanced, I should see both f0 and f1. My simple algorithm would be do constant number of random queries, random access, find out what I, what is f of x1 to f of xk, where x1 to xk are random and independent. Looking at these values, if all values are same, then I say my function is constant. If I see two values, then I will say that the function is balanced. You can show it as an exercise that this algorithm will answer correctly with very high probability. And the objection might be that why don't we allow this kind of algorithm? In some sense, this objection is a valid objection. Reason being, quantum is intrinsically probabilistic in the sense that when you measure and everything, you have probabilities. So, we want to compare quantum not just with classical model of computing, but even the probabilistic model of computing. Our task is to understand these models. There are many ways in which we can relax our classical computing model. We are going to study two. One, I have already told you, probabilistic model of computing, which is also called randomized algorithms. We will formalize what does it mean to give an algorithm in this model. All our quantum algorithms will also be in this model. 
another one is approximation algorithms they are slightly different i will emphasize on this difference once we have studied these but this says that i want to answer correctly with high probability this says that answer is close to the exact answer this two are slightly different and we will see how they are different in this lecture notes for today we are going to talk about randomized algorithms we want to understand this model what does it mean to compute something in randomly uh, i shouldn't say we want to compute something randomly but in the model of randomized computation the motivation for giving randomized algorithm you should remember remember the algorithm which i gave you for doish jotsa problem we do some queries and in the end with high probability we get a correct answer we want to say that such algorithms are also allowed in our model of that is a well well algorithm even though it will only give answer correctly with a very high probability it will not always answer correctly still we are fine we want to make it a well algorithm this model of computation will make that kind of an algorithm valid right. let's see let's see first what the deterministic model is which you already know you have seen this multiple times you have looked at algorithms for sorting searching network flows in all these algorithms you get the correct answer with 100% chance you always get the correct answer in the end and we want to relax that condition an algorithm on input x gives some output ax if we want to compute a language let's go back to our turing machine model if you want to compute a language that means x is element of 0 1 star then we say that algorithm is valid if ax is equal to lx this was a deterministic algorithm this is too simple you might get confused that why am i saying this but this will help in the next definition this is a simple thing i say that algorithm works if it answers correctly everywhere on the other hand the new model of algorithms where we will say okay these algorithms are also valid in this case our algorithm will have an input x and an additional random string as an this is slightly different but random string is also given as an input and now i want to ask is ax equal to lx for most of the random hours if that happens then i am what is the difference from deterministic model as an input i have an additional random string i am calling it by the name r and then my algorithm should be correct for most of the random hours this is not defined formally you might ask what does it mean and i only want to give an intuitive definition Uh, we will see that there are two models even here i can talk about one sided error algorithms these are two kind of randomized algorithms or i can talk about bounded error algorithms we will describe both but before i go into these two kind of randomized algorithms 
I should mention that uh, how to get R. This could be done by any randomness genera generator. You can have a coin toss. You can have a clock and which can generate a random string which you can use as a random R. There are many many ways. In particular, in quantum, you can actually get a very good randomness generation. How? Apply header mode and measure in the standard basis. This will give you 0 with probability half and 1 with probability half. So this is actually random. Apply Hadamard to 0 and measure. In quantum, we can have we have very good source of randomness at our disposal. In the classical case, people do it by coin toss, clock, some way to make a point. Knowing how we will get randomness, the next question is what are the two kind of randomized algorithms? The first I talk about is the one-sided error model. The setting will be the same, the only relaxation would be in what do we mean by the algorithm working for most of the R's. We want to define that statement for most of the random R's, what do we mean? That, that is what we want to define. Suppose I want to compute a function f or oh, sorry, uh, I should say an algorithm should accept the language L in this model, then should satisfy two things. If X is element of L, then my algorithm should answer 0 with small probability. I have put it as half here. We will discuss why I have put half here, but let us keep it like that. If x is element of L, then probability of algorithm answering 0. Remember, if x is element of L, then I should answer 1. So, if the algorithm answers 0, that is an error. This is an error probability. We want to say that the error probability is small. Also notice that it is only a one-sided error model. If x is not an element of L, then axr equal to 0 is the correct answer. And that should happen with probability 1. Now, this says that I have This is how I define a one-sided error model. There are two kind of inputs. If x is not an element of L, then I should answer correctly. I should say that ax should be 0 or ax, comma r should be 0 all the time, whatever be r. On the other hand, if x is not an element of L, then my error probability is small. Uh, you might wonder why half, That's, that has no special meaning and I will talk about it. I will mention why that is not a very important number. But before that, you might have a question. A, an attentive reader might ask, what, do, what is this probability over? Whenever you write a probability expression, you should always ask what is this probability over? And the correct thing is R. This tells us that we are computing uh, the probability for all x. This means algorithm works for all x, 
for high fraction of hours. This is going be to be true even the bounded error and this distinction is very very important. We are not saying that the algorithm should work on high fraction of inputs. Let me write it so that it is clear. We are not saying algo should work on high fraction of inputs. That is not the correct statement. This is completely wrong. We want to say that if I pick any x, then algo works for high fraction of hours. This above definition, which I have cancelled out, that is a very weak definition. For example, I know that number of primes are very small as compared to number of composites. Just by this fact, a very simple algorithm can be made which always answers that the number is composite. And this algorithm, so my algo is always say number is composite. This is a stupid algorithm. But it will work for this wrong definition. And that is the reason why we are saying that that is the wrong definition. This is an important point and I hope this is clear to you. We take the probability only over R and not over the inputs. Coming back to the question of half probability of error, let us ask is this necessary. Remember we said that if x is an element of L then 1 is the correct answer. So we said that the error probability should be less than half. This was our statement and we want to find out whether that half our claim is going to be any constant bigger than 0 will work. Why is that true? Let us say I have an algorithm which works with probability 1 by 4 instead of half. My technique would be just repeat the algorithm multiple times. If I do that, after k iterations, the probability will go down like this. And this can be made to be arbitrary small by a constant k. What does it mean? It means that error probability can be made as small as possible. Again, I am talking about constant error probability here. Just by increasing the running time by a constant. If we had an algorithm which worked in time t and had error probability 1 by 4, I have an algorithm which will take time o t k and it will only work in with error probability half. Now since k is a constant, this is whatever the t b, we are always interested in asymptotic notation, it does not matter. This tells us that the half is arbitrary. I can say that I can change it by saying that if x is not an element of n, then probability that I answer incorrectly, I am sorry, I should say x is element of l, then this is the error probability, 
there should be less than epsilon, where epsilon should be a constant greater than zero. My one-sided error model could have this line instead of the half line and nothing will change. Let us look at the second model which is called the bounded error model. In this case, if x is element of L, then probability that I answer correctly, remember this is the correct answer, that should happen with probability more than 2 by 3. If x is not an element of L, the correct answer is 0 and this should happen with probability more than 2 by 3. This is the two-sided error. few things to remember even in this case, one is that when we talk about quantum algorithms, we will mostly be concerned about bounded error model. I have introduced one sided error model because it is easier and many a times you will see randomized algorithms in that way. Uh, to distinguish between them I have introduced but for quantum case, we will mostly be talking about bounded error model. If it is not mentioned that there is a randomized algorithm, we assume that it is in the bounded error model. Notice that a one-sided error model is, I should say a one-sided error algorithm is a bounded error algorithm too. So a bounded error algorithm is in some sense weaker. It is easier to give a bounded error algorithm as compared to a one-sided algorithm. Again, emphasize this point that the probability is over R. So, the algorithm should work for all x's, all inputs for high fraction of R. This is the same as the one side we never say that our algorithm should work for high fraction of inputs. That is not the correct thing. Once again, similar to uh, half in the one sided error model, 2 by 3 is arbitrary. I can replace it with any constant bigger than half where again epsilon is a constant. You will notice that the probability of success should be at least half in this case, otherwise this algorithm is useless. Uh, if, if we say that my correct probability is 1 by 4 or even half, I can just do a coin toss and answer correctly with probability half. So definitely I need more than half. And this statement is saying that any probability which is away from half by a constant is good enough. Again, to do that, to if I have a algorithm which works with probability half plus epsilon, that is epsilon is very small and I want to convert it into an algorithm which works with probability 2 by 3, I will repeat the algorithm and take measure. The reason why this works is known as Chernoff form. I will advise you to take a look at two things. One is this proof of Chernoff bound, which shows that taking majority works, I can convert any algorithm which works with probability half plus epsilon to 2 by 3 or any constant smaller than very, very, we can go as close to 1 as possible. We can make our algorithm to be as precise as you want just by constant many iterations. That will follow from Chernoff bound. Also, there is an example of primality testing. This is a randomized algorithm in the classical world. This will give you some idea of what randomized algorithm
we will see many randomized algorithms in quantum world anyway, but it is good to start with a randomized algorithm in a classical world. So ma make sure that you read this algorithm and understand what a randomized algorithm is. That one is actually a one-sided error.